All right, you guys got the store for a little bit. I got to go see my doctor. I've been getting way too many erections in the middle of the night, and they're trying to, there's like a guy there who's not getting any erections, so they're going to group us up and see if. Are they trying to mind meld you two? I, some, the guy's got a shit ton of money, and he's looking for erections at night, and I've got plenty to spare. So, but I'm going to be late. So do you guys, if you guys can just cover, I'll, I'll come back and close. So, all right. Yeah, that's good. All right. See you guys. And he's out the door. Dan, you want to order a pizza? He's, he's having sex while dudes are watching, like husbands are watching. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Let's order a pizza. Good. Uh, the usual? Yeah, get the huge. All right. Fucking buffalo chicken. It just Extra. feels nice to split the slices and the cost 50-50. I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of used to it now. You just got to pay for his end. So. <laughs> but, anyway. How you fellas doing? Oh, can shit. We, can we help you? I think we can help each other. Sure. Yeah, we got movies here. If you got money, we got movies, dude. It's called a transaction. I got money. And I got movies. No, we've got movies. No, we got the movies. But I also got movies. Bring it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting a little heated already. What's that fuck? What's that you guys don't know Wait, who I am? You... Are we supposed to rent movies from you? Dan, I'm confused as hell, dude. What's with your hand, dude? Like, this is how I point. That's I love you. Damn, this guy's got a fucking ring on him the size of Reno. That's a you, nice ring. You like that? It's a flawless D, three hundred and thirty-two carat princess cut. Fuck. I don't know what that means. I'm pretty sure this guy's mafia. You know how you get this? You get this by creating the biggest chain of video stores in the region. Uh, I've seen your picture on the big wall at Big Wall. Yeah, and That's I've right seen your fucking thing. pictures on security cam footage outside. It's kind of weird one, that one you of name my establishments. Yourself, it's you, outside. You name, why do you name yourself Employee of the Month every month? Yeah, you're the owner. Your picture's up on the big wall every time we're over there. It's a void. If you're the owner, you can't do that. Well, nobody works as hard as me. Nobody grinds like I do. Hmm? Are you going to rent anything or not? Yeah, do you want a movie guy? Your employee of the month photo is a puppet. Yeah. Yeah. Which, He's and doing I know a great mo- job. I know movies. That's from Toulon's Revenge. That guy fucking works harder than any of your employees. Mm hmm. Or you, for that matter. He deserves Tough it. guy. Would that puppet die for you? He'll come uh, back and kill for us. So you better watch out. Listen, we got off on the wrong foot here, okay? Exactly. I'm looking for two... voodoo, you get straight. For two young bucks like yourself. Come over and work on one of my branches. You want us to work for Big, for big Wall? Yeah, why not? What's in it for me? Five day yeah. rentals days are numbered. What's in it for me? Yeah, it's five. Yeah. It's right there in the title, dipshit. It's always been numbered, yeah. Unless feel you pretty, win a two day, then feel you pretty good about yourself, it. huh? You can only have the movies here oh. for five days. Yeah. Or if it's two day, you get two days. You gotta bring it back. You know what? In How hindsight, I think I'm gonna it? go with the guy with too many boners. Okay. I think he's the he's, brains of this he whole got operation. This morning. Sorry, he well, got fired this morning. He obviously has testosterone to fucking give use twos. Not so much. I mean, he gets a lot of them, but I get one big one during the night. I don't get boners at work because I'm focused on my job. Okay. But the offer still stands. You want to come and you want to schlep real fucking movies in a real fucking store. How much you paying? Yeah. You, f- you fucked up already. You just assume I don't pay well. I, I, just, I think I you said just asked how much. You don't think I'd come in much? here? You think I'd come in here and not 
be able to beat your fucking Jerry tokens, whatever bullshit. Hey, I know. Sir, what, what, what was your I name? Know. I don't know. It looks, it looks like all the money for the store went in that ring. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I'm a stand-up guy. People know me. Ask around. We already have a guy that does stand-up. I'll see you okay? too soon, okay? I've been in here for five minutes. This is too long. Cramped in here. Fucking yeah, stinks. Smells fucking like dragging fucking the place down. Piss. All right, kisses. Jeff. Well, I'm not. I can't leave that hanging out in the air. What am I, a fucking monster? Enjoy. Have a good night, Eustace. Yeah. I have a little respect in my book for that. And I like that guy. He's terrible. His no-nonsense approach to video bargaining is unparalleled. Apparently it's made him rich, but... We got character over here at Five Day Rentals. That's... Look at us. You know what we should have done? He called us young. We're like 40. We should have asked him to throw in a few bucks on the pizza. That's true. He's probably paying way more than Jerry's paying us, huh? No, it doesn't matter. We have freedom here. I know, but sometimes extra boost minutes would be nice. Dan, here's what I think we do. Yeah, what's up? You get that pizza order in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip the sign to closed, lock the door, so when yes. Bones gets back, he's <laughs> got to go through the vent again. <laughs> Classic. And then we put on a movie, dude. He's going to go through the vent because he knows the pizza's going to be here. Dan, I think the phone's ringing. All right, I'll get it. Five-day rentals, you rent them, you bring them back. If you don't, we're late for your ass. Hey, hey, it's Bones. Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, are you guys ordering pizza? Uh, Could you leave me a few slices in the in the break room? Uh, we had we had wings tonight. Okay, well, <laughs> just leave a few of those then. <clears throat> they're they're really hot. <clears throat> I got I gotta go. Yeah, just whatever. Just leave me whatever you can. That'd be great because I won't have time to eat at this thing. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, love you guys. Love you too. Fuck, right. he knows. Good cover, Dan. No, he doesn't fucking know. He's just guessing. Fuck. All right, shut the fuck up. Order the pizza. Because tonight, we're watching Thief. Welcome back, everybody, to the Five Day Reynolds podcast. Uh, normally, we take turns picking a flick that we think meets a fun, non-genre specific category. But every once in a while, we take a break to cover a movie we really want to watch. This round's selection is Thief from 1981, directed by Michael Mann. Certified five-star banger in my book. Uh, I am, of course, before anyone else says anything on this show, the action guy. I'm the man's man. When people think about me, they say, this guy, he fucking loves Michael Mann movies more than any other hey, host. Hey, what the fuck? No, I said before anyone says anything. <laughs> I was dealing with a dog. I will be hosting this week's episode. I am Cron Howard, joined as always by uh, two guys who, let's be honest, between the two of them, they don't have $200 worth of pants. It's Bones and Laundry Dan. How you doing? Howdy. Sup, dude? All right, what, what fucking insult did I miss while I was dealing with my dog? I didn't make uh, an insult. He just what, was what do you say? Facts. Mm-hmm. Aside from Kron, the fact that I never pay for pizza, apparently. Kron is the most manliest man of us, and he loves Michael Mann. Yeah, more number than one man of fan on the pod. Okay, cool. I mean, name another Michael Mann movie. <laughs> All right. Kron, what late. day does Ferrari come out? Uh, December. That's not a day. That's a month. Yeah, it comes out in December. 
December 19th. I don't know, 21. 2022. 2023. We can't go back in time. <laughs> It's a movie. You can always go back in time. Uh, Ferrari, December 21st. Catch it in your local Cineplex. Catch it in the IMAX. I don't know if 21st was correct, Kron. I just... It'll probably still I wanted be out to, I wanted to see if you would go with the 2-1 that I threw out. <clears throat> I want to say the 22nd. All right, so get there the night of the 21st yeah. and fucking get amped up. Yeah, that means most places probably have a 8 o'clock. I mean... Mm-hmm. I watched Napoleon last night. It comes out today. So At midnight? No, I went at 3 o'clock yesterday. I go to 3 o'clock movies now. That's how fucking made I am. Damn, that's that's white collar shit right there. That's some Brewster's Millions right yeah. there. 3 o'clock IMAX, I get them fucking senior discounts. And there were a lot of seniors there. I was like, God damn, what the fuck? Uh... Cron, well, do you, they, do they you... fought with Napoleon. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that was one of my jokes. Cron, you're such a uh, Michael Mann fan. I know you already own Heat Two, surely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But would you like another copy? I'm um, I'm done with it. Would you like to read it? Yeah, I could compare it to my copy and yeah. see if they. Well, I thought maybe you'd keep your yours uh, unopened. You know. Yeah. Don't... I have it behind the blue site. Dude, you told me the other night you hadn't even seen Heat before. Who, me? Yeah. I've seen Heat. But you don't like it, though. I don't like it as much as Thief. You think Thief is better than Heat? Yeah, 100%. He just lost some listeners, I think. (sighs) Just Bones. I think Heat's better. I don't listen to this. I hate having to edit this. (laughs) If. This is Thief Blueprint. Diet, th- Diet Heat. Yeah, but if somebody said, I like Thief more than Heat, okay. To say that it's better, All right. I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. I like Thief better. Yeah. I can admit that Heat, like from a filmmaking standpoint, is a better movie. It's bigger. It's got way more budget. It's more polished. But I like Thief way more than I like Heat. When's the last time you watched Heat? I don't know. Last time I had a spare five hours? Movie's long, dude. I don't Probably a year or two ago. Are we doing a disservice to it? By, or are we doing a dis- disservice to Thief by just talking Heat this much? Because I do agree with you, Dan. Like it's certainly an informative movie on what he becomes. Right? He does this. He gets obsessed with it. He writes L.A. Takedown. He does that for TV. He realizes, ah, fuck. Is able to do another crack at it. You know, it's not like he got to do that with Thief. Not credited as a writer for Straight Time, so yeah, starts there too. Okay. Um. I don't think it's that bad to talk about it, to talk I about Heat. I, I mean, it's, cer- I just... it's certainly like his biggest, his most well-known thing, you know? Yeah. So I think if you bring up Man, you're kind of going to talk about Heat at some point. I think those two are the perfect salt and pepper. Like, you have Heat because of Thief, so. Well, I think Thief... The aspects I like about it so much, though, is that it is so much smaller in scale, right? It's like one heist. Pretty, It's pretty much building up to one thing, and you see all the kind of workings of it. I guess there's some of that in Heat, too, but <laughs> he is just, like, so much bigger. It's, like, m- maximalist compared to this movie. Also, Thief lacks a lot of tension because first job goes great. Then we're with him for 20 minutes. There's a little bit of an issue. He immediately gets it sorted. For, like the, the giant job of the movie goes off without a hitch. It's beautiful. The tension isn't from 
oh shit, they're going to get busted or anything like that. You're just fascinated by watching this process. And then it's just because of a, basically a fuck you that you get the 20 minute ending that you do get Mm -hmm. heat out the gate. That's what it is, right? It's, 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 it's the ultimate cops and robbers story. Thief is maybe his most character centric flick, right? Um, oh, yeah, it's a love story, and he completely rips that once with all yeah, his other movies. Yeah, but that's where like Khan is willing to go. His character to like just discard shit. I was talking about man. Okay. Then I didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> I thought you were saying he like ripped the the bottom out from under it. No, he took the relationship aspect from what we get with Thief with I want a kid and all that shit. Yeah, we don't have that with Heat and all that other. Oh, dude. Not nah, really. What the Not hell? Not as much as you get here. Oh. Uh, come on, man. She said they're in the movie for like five minutes, tops. Uh, I I hate that sort of argument. It's not about them, but they're in it plenty. They're they're in it enough, man. I mean, I think Thief does have tension to it, though. It's just kind of uh, it's more like he's willing to push the envelope of like what he's willing to do. And he starts making deals with people he doesn't fully understand to get there. So it's not as like, yeah, like, like you said, it's not like the cops are closing in on him. It's more like this guy's getting in too deep into like trying to make his dreams come true, you know? Yeah. But I feel that he's so good at the, at his job. And everything that en- en- encompasses it, right? All of the s- the side hustles necessary, right? Like he's he's actually he seems to be relatively good at a being a car salesman and owning a bar and all of these other things. And if he focuses on something, if he focuses on getting the girl, he gets the girl. The drama comes from his like inner turmoil because he's at he's a shithead at heart, and he managed to just fucking hyper focus on this collage or whatever you want to call it and get it through. But even when he's pulled over by the cops, I don't ever feel it. I'm not worried about him when he's getting the shit beat out of him. His, the vibe is very much, I got this. And it's only when Leo is like, come on, man, you're like the only fucking guy who doesn't play with the cops. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't do that. So it, it's like Superman as a story. Right is very uninteresting often because what are you going to do to Superman? Who can he not fight? Right, you have to come up with like these crazy situations to stab him with kryptonite or kill Lois Lane or you know do all these other things. I don't feel that with Thief at all. I'm I'm more confused by just. And that's my own hangups because I fucking hate when people are pieces of shit and I have to watch them. Like, God damn, why, mor- morally speaking, I dislike you, but you're so engaging that I'm watching you. But And at the end of this, him walking away, I'm, I'm indifferent on it. I don't know. So t- maybe tension isn't the right word. Drama is too just sort of generic, but I think we got into this too when we, were t- when we talked to the witch a few weeks ago, but... I think all of his goals were achievable without having to go into the pocket of somebody else. Car salesman has a bar. But he does. Yeah, but go ahead. I mean, the car salesman in the bar, like, I think a little bit of that is to, like, wash his money, right? 100%. Like, yeah. Yeah. So he's doing the same kind of, like, the car place might not be moving that many vehicles, but he's, you know, doing gangbusters on paper because he needs to pay taxes and shit. I think a lot of it just is stylistic choice. 
it's him wanting that final job to just be so smooth because you want because that's so enjoyable that when you get to a certain age as a dude and you can watch somebody just pull off what they've planned it's impressive like oh, that's awesome but i feel like any other movie leo would have had a guy on his crew and he would have fucked it up midway through the job right been like no leo wants us to take this and they would have mm-hmm. added something into that to make and it would have snowballed from there but that job is is sandwiched on either side by cops sort of getting into his shit, his his mentor dying. But even after his mentor dies and he has a kid, his like karma relationship of just like, eh, whatever, cool. It all sort of worked out. But like Dan said, he, he gets everything. Yeah, but I mean even in the in the heist that we see go correctly, right? Like the the first heist where he's operating as his own guy, I think their take is like 185,000. So they, they steal like $500,000 worth of diamonds, but he says, I'll take 185, but you split that three ways. I mean, it's like 60 grand a pop. So it's 1981. Yeah. But I think to him, it's the difference of like, I could operate doing these small jobs. Like I could do two to three a year and get by or I can do this one big job for this guy and I'm out. Like I can go be a family man and shit. It was 400 K for what? For the Calif- bank of California job. 480. Was, there were three guys or four. There were three guys in the beginning one. Four in the, no, there's no, only I think th- it's the same three. It's guys. the same it's three. The same three. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't seem like much when you got to divide it. Is I he- don't think it's four eighty k. I thought the Leo says at one point that the take, like the value, is four million dollars in diamonds. Yeah, but his it- cut was only his team was only four hundred. Oh, was it supposed? Was it supposed to be like eight forty? Am I getting my numbers backwards? I think it, I think it was eight forty. Yeah. It's like close to a million bucks that he's gonna pocket wow. for the job. I guess that's not too bad. I don't It just doesn't, I don't know. Is, I mean, it, is he truly paying them a third? I doubt it. I mean, he's probably given them some percentage, but that one dude's got the sweet gig, man. He just sits in the car and listens to the radio, and then he mm-hmm. fucking is the extinguisher guy on the second job, but... Kron, in no way am I am I trying to come at this negative. I am more trying to just discuss what makes this particular movie so different mm-hmm. in terms of I watch it and I'm I'm like stress free. It is it's a lot of style, but there's still enough there. It's not it's like more than uh I can never pronounce his fucking name, like Drive. Drive is like trying to force a bunch of tension with style and this is just nat- it naturally comes I totally agree why he takes the gig with Leo he exposed himself enough to try to get that on 150k from the mm-hmm. beginning and this guy lays it out and he even says like well let me think about it you know but after having a great night with what's her name and I think he's just sort of riding that high like wow this what I would, that's a terrible first date. (laughs) Yeah, but they're like, they're like two kind of shitty people. Yeah. That are just like, let's be actual adults for one. Like, let's. They got all the bad stuff out of the way. They had like four fights just in that booth alone. So they're going to. I don't believe that, that he would do this. I do not believe that he would just. I want a kid. Well, he's got the whole vision board, dude. This yeah. is he's he's been putting this shit together for years. He's like fifty. Yeah, but he's a fucking a, kid. He's an ex con, dude. He's just trying to be like a normal You saying old dudes can't have kids? I'm not saying I just don't 
Take that, Bobby De Niro. <laughs> There's, he's so good at what he does, and he might have took the last job with Leo just because he fucking loves doing that shit. That might have been part of it. I think there is a part of it too, where it's like, I think to him, he's you know not living up to his to like what he's capable of. He's kind of like, yeah, I do want to try like a big job because I'm the best thief there is, you know? Like I can operate at this guy's level and be good at it. Plus the guy's doing a shit ton of the groundwork, a bunch of the prep. He's He's been handed quite a bit. And he has the option to say like, no, nah, I'm not doing it too. So everything looks good to him. I, I genuinely buy the state of affairs that go into him deciding that. Do I think you could have re-edited it a little bit or something to kind of add to it? Like Kron saying, like, you've got this collage, you've got these things, and the few missing pieces sort of all come to the head, like, in a week, right? This girl that he really likes and he wants to take the next step, his mentor wants to get the fuck out. Like, these things sort of happen. Like, I... I buy that. I, I don't know. He, I just don't. His motivation to take the job to Leo is the kid and the girl wanting the baby and the girl. And it just doesn't. See, I don't know. But I know you got to have. That's what pushes the movie. So. Yeah, but I, 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 I just th- don't believe. I believe. uh Bushimi, or not Bushimi, what's his name? Belushi. Belushi, his character would be like, yeah, I, I want a kid and shit. I would believe it on his end, but not James Caan's character. Yeah, but- that's what I struggle with. He's so like... Even after the uh, adoption scene where he un- unveils like, I grew up in one of these fucking places. like. But he, his lifestyle, we see that at the end, like... His lifestyle came back to bit him, bite him in the ass, and now he can't raise this child. You want to say death style so bad. You want to quote Metallica. My lifestyle determines my death style. It's from Metallica's best album, St. Anger. Don't at me. Kron, what, what is it about Thief? Like, what is there one thing that is like... Anybody asks you, why is this your favorite, Michael Mann? What do you love about this movie? What... What's the elevator pitch from Kron Howard? Hold on, Kron. I want to say one more thing. I'm not shitting on this movie. It's a dynamite movie. I was trying to get past that, so it seemed like you were shitting on it. (laughs) Uh, I think to me, like especially compared to Mann's other movies, I think he gets fixated on the thing is what is important. The heist is what's important. The action is what's important. And I do like this movie better than all the rest that I've seen because this one is like, no, the guy is the most important aspect of this movie. Like the heist, the the heist that it builds to is almost secondary. It's more kind of like this tragic story of a guy who wants to go straight, but even when he's like, you know, lining up the 10 dominoes he needs to get there, like he can't. He's stuck, you know, like he's a convict. So no, you can't adopt the kid. And it just, I think it's, to me, it's more about Khan's character than anything. And that's what I find interesting about it. It's got a kick-ass score too. It's got a great score. It looks fucking amazing. Like, I mean, this is 81. I think if you want to look at like, what thriller movies eventually looked like in the 90s and then what TV looked like in the 2000s, it, you can pretty much trace it back to Thief. I mean, he did do Miami Vice, so. Yeah, but, I mean, he's building on his own stuff. He also did that show where they killed all those horses. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, dude. I did find I did find something for what horses are useful. 
period pieces for movies. So that's allowed. Was that your takeaway from Napoleon? Okay. Honestly, I can see use for horses. Honestly, I oh, really it'd liked... Be, it'd be fucking dumb if they had fucking Jeep Wranglers in this. <laughs> that might have been cooler. All right. The horses, here, here's, the horses make sense. Here's the compromise. It's two guys in a horse suit. Oh, that would be awesome. Or four guys in a Wrangler suit. <laughs> Is each one a tire? Mm-hmm. And- I think it has to be like six guys in the Wrangler suit. Wranglers are small, man. A little tiny. That's a girl's car. I had a Wrangler, and you know that. Yeah. I was going to say just a Sierra, but I didn't, I didn't say it. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the cops in this movie? I think they're pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They literally just exist to like f- fuck his day up. It barely. Like, I mean, he gets he gets the best of them multiple times. Mm-hmm. I think he, he deserves an Oscar for the way he's acting when that dude is hitting him with that tiny trash can. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I do like how they they well they tap in like twelve different cops. These guys just get exhausted from three or four blows, and then they just yeah, tag they, out the next the next highest ranking guy to come in. Yeah, there's always another guy coming through that door to punch <laughs> him a little bit more. I mean, the cops are funny in this movie. Like they they don't need to exist in this film, but they do. Or well, maybe that's the. Maybe man said, I don't have enough tension. Maybe they do say we know you're on to something big here in the next few days, but it doesn't even take place in Chicago. Doesn't matter. The... You mean the, the like final job doesn't? Yeah. So the, during that, first meet with Leo and we see that the the cops are staking them out Were those just, those are some of the dirty cops, right? Were they in with Leo just giving him protection or were they just, they just snoop on Leo to see what he's up to so they can grab some cash out of it. I think they just get paid from like, like all parties involved. So Leo probably has to kick him some money and then, on down the line, you know, it's kind of like, hey, if you work with this guy, you got to put 10% in my pocket. Yeah. And Leo might only have to pay like 3% or so, you know, like some cut rate because he's generating all this business. But he at least plays ball, we find out. Mm-hmm. And that's one of his grievances with with Khan. What do you think about that Willie Nelson, Dan? Uh, is Willie Nelson a good actor? I think he's good in this. I mean, just for like the for like a small role, you know. My problem is his death scene. It just looks like he's laying there just smiling. Like I don't know if just the way the camera is or but I get up real close to the camera right now. We can recreate his scene. Do you want to have a jailhouse meeting here? Maybe he's happy that he's dying. (laughs) Fucking hates this world. He just didn't want to die in jail. Yeah. it It makes him slightly less of a piece of shit. If he doesn't die in jail. Are we supposed to believe like he is? F- this isn't is really ever- comfortable. I thought one of you would also join me in getting really close to your mic. I can't get that close to. Well, I mean, I'm on my mic. I can't get that close to my camera. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I'm going to be talking super loud, though. 
well, we have a small little hole that we got to blast through. It's the Joliet prison. You never been there? Uh, I think I'll go there, what, next year? Wins Blues Brothers? The real Chicago movie? God damn it. <laughs> Karan, this is your up. Why am I asking all the questions? Yeah, Karan. I don't know. You guys are doing a good job of ripping on this movie. <laughs> Nobody's ripping on this movie, man. It's no, a five-star both, banger. Both hated it. I get it. I very much enjoyed this movie, dude. I will say I, I've i always heard about Thief, and I finally got my eyes on it, and I was like, Okay. And I I think this might be like the third or fourth time. And it grows it grows on me every time. I mean, you guys don't like the score? You don't like the Shut film up. making? I that <laughs> the score at the movies. end shootout is maybe one of my favorite pieces of like 80s score. That guitar riff is so badass. There are regular podcasts where the hosts are this close to the mic. You guys know that? Really? Yeah. I don't watch my podcasts. I just listen. You know Belushi this he was on or he's, he was in this movie before he was on SNL. Wasn't he uh doing Second City at this time? I think so, yeah. That always weirds me out though. Like whenever you see a movie with an SNL uh, alumni, but before they're on it, his brother would come through. John, still alive at the time, I guess they would go to his no speakeasy. <laughs> when I I I heard this, I listened to another podcast about the thief, but um, I guess they didn't charge anybody at the speakeasy, so they never had to close. They could stay open for 24 hours. I was like, that's a horrible business plan. It's not about the money, Dan. <laughs> about having a place to party any hour of the day. Well, yeah, so after long nights of shooting, man and Khan and the Belushis would all go have drinks there. They probably had like a tip jar, huh? Yeah, I imagine. Dennis Farina there sneaking in. Asking for mm-hmm. acting tips. Dude, can you imagine you walk in there that night and it's the Belushis, Michael Mann, James Caan. <laughs> ah, that'd have been awesome. Everybody coked out. And you just went All but and you, had a drink because you you're square. The fuck none of them were. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy that Khan is hairier than Belushi, right? Yeah, but Belushi's got... A dad bod that would break the internet right now, though. People would be all about he, that. He looks good when he comes out of that water. And then he just, he straight up fucking how, nails that how, shit. How, tackles that how shit. he did like, not God, break dang. her ankle, I don't know. I couldn't tell if he, like, if he fell. You know, if yeah, he was it like. kind of looked like he stumbled a little bit, maybe. Yeah, look. It looked to me like he was supposed to like playfully tackle this woman, but it looks like he falls and then he just like sweeps her legs out from under her. And she lands on the back of her head. I was like, my wife would be mad at me for a fucking month and a half. If oh, I yeah. <laughs> it looked like a fuck up though to me. Oh, I, I think so. I think maybe he was, he realized he was coming in too hot and in trying to slow down. That's kind of where he ended up, but he still tried to grab her, and he just grabs her by either the knee or the ankle. I mean, it is a last-ditch fucking open-field tackle. I think she's topless, too, at that point. I think that's wishful thinking, Dan. Uh, I, think he, the tape. I think he does like rip her top off or something, and she nah, runs away. She, she has it off. Cause she, I think she's taking it off and she turns and that's when he comes running. I would too. Yeah, me too. 
We're talking about Thief, and that's what we're we're fo- that's the scene we're focused. On. Well, everybody else has already talked about all the good character shit. Mm-hmm. Michael Mann's history, you know, learning to write. I think he went to uh, the UK for a little bit. Had a good mentor. Learned how to write TV screenplays. You know, goes on after this and fucking gets rich making Miami Vice. Changes the course of syndicated television. Yeah. Well, and he did some TV before this, right? But this is like his first, I mean, this is definitely his first movie. He directed like a sports made for TV movie. Yeah. Jericho's Wall or something. Jericho Mile. Jericho Mile, yeah. Dwarf on Golf. And a documentary in there too, I think, right? Kind of, I I mean, he's got uh, some freaking energy, right? Yeah. He, he kind of At does. least now, like 81, yeah. Oh, I think even still, though, he's like, really? yeah, he's an absolute control freak, um, is obsessed with dudes that are really good at their job, constantly has like, oh, this guy was an actual federally wanted criminal, and he yeah, was think- the... On this movie, he brought in both, like, former cops and former cons to be like, hey, just, like, you know, make sure we're doing all this shit the way it would be done. And then he put, I don't know, like, four of them in the movie. Yeah, so I think think Farina was one of the guys that came in as, like, a... He was a cop, yeah. Tech or something. Uh, His cons character is based off John Santucci. And Santucci's in the movie as a a cop. And that's who wrote the book that it's based off of. Santucci. Thief. You're either a criminal mob guy or you're a magician, right? I mean, it's are like gonna, are you a nice one, or, Italian restaurant? one or two things. Okay. The, gr- yeah. the great Santucci? Yeah. <laughs> and if that fails, then you open the restaurant and you, yeah. you know, you walk around and you fucking pull shit out of shit hey oh yeah you you do like a little uh like you pull a rose out of your sleeve and mm-hmm. hand it to all the wives start hugging those wives yeah no you'll get shot at a mob club dude you can't be hugging on wives like that but yeah he had them all use the equipment i think he purchased safes and shit that he made them break into yeah, it's just man shit and it it works it shows man this is technically like his yeah his first movie and he had this much fucking control so I mean name a stronger debut movie than this clerks UV <laughs> the witch you think Clerks is a better movie than Thief? No. <laughs> God, no. It is crazy when he talks at the end. Because <laughs> his name is Silent J, dude. I, it's Silent Bob. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> right, dude. I tried to rewatch Clerks like maybe last year, and I was like, I, I can't do this. It was rough. I did it after I watched Clerks 3, finally. I still haven't watched that one. It's a wild swing, man. It's a wild swing. I feel like I had something about Clerks, and now I can't think of what it was. Oh, do you think in the first draft he was mute Bob, and they had to to go back? Because he added that great... Dialogue scene at the end. Oh, because mute implies that he's unable to talk, whereas yeah, silent like, is a choice. Yeah, silent is a choice. Silent is a choice, Bob. And then you see his comedy specials and he doesn't shut up. What does he even say at the end of Clerks? It's just I like. Don't remember. It's like if someone brings you lasagna, that's nice. <laughs> like most, fuck. he tells what? a story about a, a girl that he was with, and he basically says, 
uh, most girls cheat on you. Not all of them bring you lasagna. Like he's basically telling him, like, don't freak out about the fact that she's sucked thirty six dicks before you. Like she's with you now. You should enjoy it now. Well, and she's got some experience. <laughs> she's probably pretty good. Yeah. At it. Was it thirty six? Yeah, I think that's like a sticking he's, point. Because he's thirty seven. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks in a row. I'm not even supposed to be here today. I'm not Dean, gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say that Clerks is a better movie than Thief, but it's a pretty fucking strong first movie. I think you're making a pretty good point. I would right say, now. well, Reservoir Dogs. I would say Reservoir Dogs is better than Thief. I don't think it's better. I mean, I think it's pretty good, but Reservoir Dogs is kind of boring. You gotta go. You gotta do a rewatch. I've seen it. Watch it now, though. Let's year. let's pause the podcast and you can watch it, and then we'll talk about it. Come back and do Clerks too. We'll come back tomorrow. In fact, right. do we'll we'll do Clerks on the next box set. It's a franchise. Yeah. Though. No, we don't need to do that. <laughs> We're we, doing it. Yeah, let's Clerks. do that, and then you do the plot for Thief. How many movies are we doing in the Clerks box set? Three. But Jay and Silent Bob show well, up. Yeah, and like, yeah there's that an opens extended it up to Dogma universe, and Chasing Amy. You got the whole view yeah. askew. Yeah. We're not doing Kevin Smith's filmography. I think you should at least include Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, right? We could there's do only two Red Kevin State Smith on this show. We'd ever do. Yeah. That's Red. one of them, and there's another one. Yeah, we're not doing the other one. Tusk. Yeah, we're doing Tusk. What's the and, category? And Jersey. Girl. Bad for your health. Yoga Hosiers. Did anybody watch that? No. No. I think I watched three minutes of it. I think <laughs> like, Penny Smasher watched it and he was like, that shit is terrible. <laughs> Do you ever make his Moose Jaws movie? Wasn't that Yoga Hosers? No. Isn't Yoga Hosers the one with like Johnny Depp's kid in it? Mm-hmm. And his kid, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it Moose Jaws right. was it was going to be like a remake of Jaws, but with a moose. God damn it! <laughs> I thought it was like going to be like a hockey movie or some shit. I'm sure there'll be hockey I'm, in it. There's going to be hockey in it, dude. <laughs> We're talking about Thief. Why the fuck are we talking about Kevin Smith? Because this is our show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gron, who did the fucking score for this movie? Tangerine Dream, baby. Sorcerer, then this movie? <sighs> God damn. I mean, what a run. And then Risky mm. Business. Sorcerer, now our number one episode. Ever on Five Holy Down. shit, yeah. It's only beating Apocalypto by a few days. By a small, so. small margin, but. Think Apocalypto Christ. Apocalypto fans, get out there. Think Christ, we started it with that cold open where we're moving a box full of semen out of the porn room. That's... That's our magnum opus called Open, man. That's still my favorite. How many downloads do you think we got that did not make it past uh, the cold open? 90% of them. I think that's most of our episodes, right? It's got to be. I have genuinely wondered if we should put a timestamp of when we actually start talking about the movie in the show notes. So most people who are like, I... Ah, Fuck this no. stupid bad shit. We, we've come this far. That's just you either get on or get out, boy. Well, and it's made worse now that we make them even more interconnected. So they're not really approachable. Yeah, Chris cold, will put them all together in timeline. The cold, the cold, the cold opens are for us. <laughs> That's warm up. Yeah. 
So I should just put in there that we actually start talking about the movie at about 36 minutes in. Where are you going to put that? Yeah. You can, you in the show notes. I don't read those ever for anything. I can actually add timestamps on there you go. where we upload from. What, so now we got like a skip credits button on our fucking podcast? That's too much work for me. I can't do that. We could. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure the five minutes a week that you spend hitting upload. Do you, do you want me to list my duties? Don't. Because I know I shit you, twice I, today. I know you do a lot. And I don't want I who don't do shit for this shit. I don't want to have this argument. One of us <laughs> is the James Conn of this operation. That's One of mean. us is the Belushi. Then there's another guy who gets to sit in the car and listen to the radio. To the fucking radio. I do stuff. <laughs> who manages our Plex? <laughs> huh? You ever ask yourself that? Well, uh, Plex is I know, oper- operating at about somebody, a C minus this week. I know, because you, you remind me every fucking... Yeah. Third text that there's a, Plex is a reason there. I watched Plex or uh, Thief on Paramount Plus this week. What do you mean it wouldn't load, it would, dude? It like took Plex wouldn't load or the video wouldn't load. It took me two hours to finish Phantom or Phantasm Two. I just didn't have the heart to tell you. You know what? Get your own Plex. <laughs> How about that? How about you I do knew that? That would be your answer. Get your own Plex. Do it yourself. Who paid the twenty dollars for a Google Drive, huh? Cron Howard. Thank I'm in you. deep to Google over here. Cron, what is your favorite part of Thief? I think we already. I already that. kind of asked that one, but not like a favorite scene or line or anything. Okay, I guess that's. Yeah, I like whenever uh, he goes to see a Taglia and uh, he's got the goons down on the ground and he says, look at the wall, you fucking goof. <laughs> I like when he lists off, like, I wear silk shirts. I think that's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, $800 suits. I change my car more, like, like most guys change their shoes. Their fucking shoes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I I think my favorite part might be fucking gags in that diner, man. That guy is talk about a uh, goof. The egg man? Yeah. <laughs> he is built like an actual egg. Yeah. Yes. It's insane. Yes. <laughs> you could drop a matchbox car off the top of his head and it would roll down his wrist. No problem. I wonder where they found that guy. <laughs> yeah. I also, uh, I mean, we're basically in spoiler country uh, or Diablo spoiler, whatever the fuck we call it. Um, when Leo dies, I love his fucking death scene. There's something so odd about the fact that he's shot four times, but then still has the mental attitude to grab the gun. And I don't know if that's because the actor dropped the gun when he fell or what but it, it's so awkward looking then he like reaches out and picks it back up yeah, <laughs> yeah he is still screaming after he gets shot in the head mm-hmm. the squib is crazy on Leo well even uh, Belushi had squibs a, are Belushi incredible well, yeah. man god those are cool the squib on Leo there is enough blood to cover an entire wall like that sprays out of that guy's face. Pr- Prosky looks like he's got a lot of blood in that head. That's a big head. His speech there at the end, too, like with the acid and all that, I think is really good, too. The f- uh, framing on he, that is incredible. You think he took the brown acid at Woodstock? No, he took the burning one. You think he's enjoying Woodstock? I get the sense that he's busting fucking hippie skull. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think he came there to fight. Yeah. Dude, if Doc showed up in your driveway and was like, I'm taking you back to Woodstock, you would want to go? No. I'd be like, yeah, bitch, 99. We burn some shit down. Yeah, maybe the limp biscuit. I want to ride Doc. one of those plywood pieces. <laughs> to Metallica? Doc Brown? Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from uh, that future movie or something? Yeah, I'd go back to 69 Woodstock. Why not? Really? Look like a hell yeah, dude. It'd be a terrible fucking time. I'm trying to get on ass and f- Our- fuck a hole into the earth. <laughs> <laughs> but is this like future DeLorean where it can fly you actually into the crowd so you don't have to park and get the DeLorean uh, gotta, stuck in mud? You got to go through the whole thing. Oh, fuck that. Right. It takes you to like Ithaca, New York. And you just got to get to Woodstock. Nah, dude. Because the original DeLorean's useless in gridlock. <laughs> they want to be hitting 88. Yeah. Well, it's not useless. I mean, it's a car. What? Still functions I, as a I, vehicle. I'm implying the technology of said vehicle. Plus, all those fucking people tripping on acid see that fucking moon car? No way. <laughs> Blow their minds right out of their heads, oh, dude. All that pristine stainless steel is going to get fucking graffitied with flower power and shit. Mm-hmm. That should be the fourth Back to the Future. Girls Mama coming Ken. up and Doc stuck christening in traffic, it with their fucking moon blood. Mama Cass laying on the hood the next morning. <laughs> Get ready for plot. Should we take a b- break now? Yeah. All right, let's, let's take a break now. <laughs> I'm going to take a brown acid in the toilet. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Five Day Reynolds podcast. Uh, we are just about to jump into the plot breakdown for Thief. I'm um, fighting an uphill battle trying to convince these two this is a better movie than, I don't know, Ant-Man or some shit, so. I don't know. That Paul Rudd's pretty dreamy. You're on uh, flat Kansas ground, bro. A little uh, peek behind the curtain for the listener. We are recording this episode November 22nd. Dan. What was happening on this day 60 years ago? Uh, that's the anniversary of the uh, the JFK assassination. Unfortunately, what? we lost one of our greatest presidents. Dan, tell them once and for all, the listeners out there, who done it? We don't have enough time, Kron. We don't have enough time. Give me a name. Um... Lee Harvey Oswald. It's not oh. the who, it's the why, Kron. And possibly one of the security guards on the motorcade. God, the squib oh. that they put on JFK's head, there was so much fucking blood coming out of it. It was fucking wild. Chunks of brain, dude. Yeah. I mean, there is a theory that one accidentally shot, and that was that one. What, a squib? No, one of the... Or one of his secret service guys. Oh, he was just like playing with his gun in the back of the car? No, he was... Lee Harvey shot at him. And he was trying to get to the president and accidentally fired. Because there are... Jackie and all of them reported the smell. Like, we could smell like... What is it? Human shit. <laughs> Brains. I want to say sulfur. Human brains smell like right. shit. Do they? No. Bones would be able to, to confirm that. Um, that would be a bummer, huh? <laughs> if your brain just smelled like stunk. shit. Yeah. Uh, my encounter with brains, I don't know if I'll ever talk about on the show. I don't know if that's appropriate but I don't recall what it smelled like. Um, 
Yeah, you're probably just, more shocked that you're seeing it. Yeah. Well, just, oh. And also, fingers crossed that it's better than human shit, huh? I would imagine. I don't know. I see shit every day. I bet your brain doesn't have a smell. It could sure handle it. I'm sure body parts have a smell. You think your brain smells? Yeah, that's what allows you to smell. Well, you know what I mean. Bones, are you Googling do brains have a smell? (laughs) The pancreas, liver, and stomach wouldn't smell very pleasing because of the bile. The bladder would mostly smell like urine. Intestines would smell like feces. But basically, none of your organs would smell any good. All right, okay, let me... What? Go to fucking Hannibal's website, dude. (laughs) His blog? (laughs) It still hasn't been caught. Uh, Without contact with air, your brain doesn't really smell. There you go. Somebody asked if you could smell my own... If I could smell my own brain, what would it smell like? That's weird. You're, How can you? Still, yeah, because your brain can't smell itself, right? Mm-mm. It's like, what does my I, skin feel like? Well, are you using your skin to feel it? You guys definitely didn't take the brown acid. Maybe, maybe your fingertips are fucking oily. That's uh, why, dude. You're... We're talking about what brains smell like. I'm pretty sure we took the brown acid. <laughs> I thought the brown acid was the bad one. It didn't work. No, it worked too good. (laughs) Fucking put a whole group of people on Doc Brown's DeLorean. People were seeing a a fucking space age fucking coop fly off into the air. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, this is Steve from 1981, directed by Michael Mann. Uh, We see our hero, Frank. He gets picked up. Streets are, oh, so very rainy and wet. It's a small team. He's got three guys, a wheelman who monitors police chatter, wire guy who intercepts alarms, and Frank the safe cracker. It's a pretty great drawn-out opening. We're just watching these guys operate. They're pros. There's almost no dialogue until they, like, radio each other to make sure everything's clear. Uh, Frank gets into the safe. He takes a bunch of loose diamonds, leaves everything else. Just, I get it. You're robbing the safe, but just making a mess unnecessarily. Yeah, but it's the whole point of like, I got in. Now you have to clean up this mess. I know. So it's just a little too much for me. He's the messy bandit, dude. Leave a little note or something. Leave a little origami crane. That's evidence, bro. He's got to throw out all the jewelry and shit so he can get to the diamonds. I'm sorry. I'm taking all that shit. No. You're not yeah. a pro, dude. You're going to get busted selling I'm a fucking... Beyond pro. One of a kind anklet. Yep. You're going to be too tempted to try to sell it. You can't sit on it. Give it to a lady. These guys yeah. work quick. They're in and out. They swap cars, swap clothes, park I'm in a covered... still in art anyway. Thomas Crown Affair, ever heard of that shit? No. <laughs> I like to steal movie. hearts and minds. <laughs> I like to steal... Kisses? Oh, I always got to steal them from you, Dan. <laughs> All right, these guys, they, they're pros. Swap cars, swap clothes, they park in a covered garage. Uh, Tangerine Dream Score is fucking absolutely banging in this part of the movie. Cut over to Frank. Uh, he's at his day job. He's a used car salesman slash bar owner. Quickly leaves his car dealership to go visit his diamond fence, who's named Joey Gags. Is Khan just riffing all of these directions to people that are not 
off camera that he's yelling at, like, Bobby, move this Mark IV up here. Yeah. I mean, he every other car, he's got, like, something. It's a little much. <laughs> take, take this one to the back. Yeah. Move that one up. Put that under the light, will you? Uh, Frank's a pro again. He already, at his meeting with Joey Gags, he already knows that these are all D flawless VSI 1 diamonds. It says wholesale is 550K, but I'll take 185. Uh, Joey Gags is like, hey, my guys want to meet you. Uh, they like what you do. But Frank's like, I'm not really interested in that shit. This guy also says, like, dude, I could put your money out on the street rather than pay it to you. You could triple up in three months. Frank says, my money goes in the bank. You can do whatever the hell you want with yours. It's kind of a recurring thing, too. Like, Frank expects to get paid for a job done well. Uh, Frank leaves, but he spots a waitress that he's into. Her name's Jessie. He asks her out, and she agrees. Back at the car dealership, Frank gets a letter from his buddy who's still in prison. This guy's named Okla. Uh, he also takes out uh, his custom, uh, like, dream board that he's made and keeps in his wallet. That's a collage. Yeah. It's a bunch of, like, cut-out pictures of, I think there's, like, a car, a picture of Okla. Some skulls. The, the guy who kisses his girlfriend that's a Navy sailor. Did you just throw an Eyes Wide Shut reference in here? No, it's more like that famous picture of the... <laughs> oh, the end of the war? <laughs> yeah. I don't but think interesting that, that you went straight to Eyes Wide Shut. I don't think that kiss was consensual, so I feel weird every time I, I see it. It's you know. 45, dude. It's It was cool. Oh, yeah. That's back when we were hugging wives, right? Mm-hmm. No, we, we could... <laughs> do whatever we really want. <laughs> you don't think it was a consensual kiss? It wasn't, Kron. She, the lady said, like, yeah, he just grabbed me because the camera was there and kissed me. Just like the one of the Marines, like, pushing up the flag. That's the second shot. Yeah, that was set up. Oh, what's next? Like, that guy at the end of the bridge wasn't even screaming? No, that was real. It's me at the end of every podcast. That chick also said the weird thing about that kiss was she she could smell that sailor's brain. (laughs) She was shot afterwards. He might have had some... (laughs) Might have got a fucking war injury he didn't know about. Brain was leaking into his mouth. They were still using lead paint on the boats. Actually, that guy didn't even go to, he was in New York waiting to go to war, and then it ended, so he didn't even have to fight. I used to love licking the paint inside the boat. So this guy doesn't have to go to war, still gets to steal a kiss. Yeah. And he didn't get in trouble. He's locked in infamy, yeah. Yeah, famous forever. He should go to fucking jail. Yeah. Our allies. Dig him up. (laughs) Desecrate his grave. Take his body out of, what's the famous cemetery? Uh, Morningside? Arlington. Arlington. (laughs) Is that the next step in canceling? Like, we take down all the statues, (laughs) are we going to start digging up? Fucking Civil War generals' bodies. I'm all for it. Start, mm-hmm. uh, start uh, fucking four DWIs. Yeah, get this fucking guy out of here. <laughs> what do we do with him, though? Toss him in the river. Man. I, what do we do with the bones? I, I don't know, but maybe make space for some nice lady who volunteered, you know, who never actually hurt anybody. Or just plant a tree. What if you dig them up, though, when the curse of the Confederacy comes back? <laughs> what was wrong with the that, Confederacy? That impl- Dan, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> God damn it. 
I'm just saying, if you disturb the bones at this point, their restless spirits could haunt the South, you know? I think Dan was onto something. South. Let's just start fucking putting trees right over their graves and just... Maybe their bodies will get sucked up into the trunks of these things and we'll get some cool sleepy hollow trees. Nice apple tree. Would you eat the apples, though? I mean... Hey, strawberries. You'll have to throw the first years away. And yeah. You're good after that. These apples have the essence of Robert E. Lee yeah, you might of them. <laughs> Be careful not to eat the sus seeds inside. You'll fucking split up from the union. <laughs> All right. Frank learns that the diamond deal went sideways. Uh, Joey Gags has been thrown out of a window. Frank tracks uh, this g- tracks down a guy named Ataglia. Wish they would have showed that. What? Oh, the like body hitting the ground. Yeah, like just give us a little. I don't know. Give us a little something, something. You get that awesome intro, which is an ultimate vibe check. Tells you what you're in for with the movie. If you cannot follow what the fuck Belushi is saying in the next five minutes, you're kind of in a world of hurt for the next 20. Because it is just, it is all technical jargon. Well, that's one of my, like, you see this descending camera that comes down these fire escapes and the rain and the fucking Tangerine Dream score. And you're like, this is going to be the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. The greatest, like, awesome. And then you just get to that diner and it's like, <laughs> you you just want it all diamond heists all the time. And it's a that diner scene's great. It's great. But it's just like it It's like a fucking speed bump, man. You want an oceans movie. Yeah, I need a fucking Asian guy coming out of a dish cart. But all I get is, Don't, what's his name? Yes, David. we all need that. We agree with you. We've gotten your pamphlets, and we are trying, okay? Also, they, they couldn't show Gag's body hitting the ground because uh, you would have seen five people run over and try to smell his brain. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bones. What? We're going to be getting brain stuff for the next two weeks oh we'll get a screenshot of somebody also googling what a brain smells like or something and discord yeah in like six weeks what the fuck are they talking about but i love it yeah if if you're listening uh male bones a little piece of brain (laughs) yeah let's not do that do not let's not not mail me that please i've already been mailed some stuff i don't know where it came from i never got any of those Bones, edit that out. What? <laughs> that my last comment. No. Keep the Confederacy things. <laughs> I legit did not hear what you said. I was tr- sipping. All right, Frank. Am I taking it out? His... Nah, you're fine. Okay. Frank finds this guy named Ataglia. He got the money off of Joey Gags. At first, Ataglia, he plays dumb. He's like, I don't even know who Joey Gags is, man. But Why Frank the fuck pull- you bothering me with this shit? <laughs> Somebody knows this you? That's great. Yeah. Frank isn't having it. He pulls him. He pulls a gun on him, takes control of the situation. Uh, this guy's guards do come in, but Ataglia is like, all right, do what he says, get on the ground. Frank does call one of these guys a goof, which I don't know why, but it cracks me up every time I watch the movie. Frank goes to visit Oakland Prison. I was going to say the power move of moving the chair closer to the desk and at like a 90 degree angle is pretty boss. I think he does it to make sure he's not going to pull like a a gun or something. Mm Mm-hmm. Ataglia does a cool thing too, where because he's like not even paying attention when Frank comes in, and when he starts telling him like we have a problem, he looks directly up as if Frank should be sitting in front of him, but he's not, dude. 
It's already on the side. Already yeah, on the side. Ready to hustler, fuck his world man. up. This guy's a fucking professional. He's man. the last he guy I would want to fuck at a with. diner and take her out for one night and then fucking adopt a kid with her like two days later and buy her a house in suburban well, Chicago. It, it's inferred that uh, they've gone out a few times already. No, they yeah. have not. Yeah, they have. No, they have not. He went to that diner every morning and bought coffee. That's it. I, I read from it like, they already know each other because the way he's like, we still meeting tonight. She's like, yeah. No, when he asks her out, that's the first time. I'm kind of with Dane here. I don't think they've been out before. No, this is the first time. Okay. What can I do? I, I, I I'm out manned Roll here. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Out Michael manned here. <laughs> that's two ends. Frank goes to visit Oakland prison. Oakland's like, dude, I got fucking angina. He basically says, I don't want to die in this prison. Uh, Frank says that he'll handle it. Frank goes to meet the guy uh, who has his money. So this is the meet with Ataglia. He does tell Ataglia, like, you got three or four hours to get me my money. They pay Frank what he's owed. But the main guy, Leo, says, uh, I know your work. Why Why don't you come work for me? I can get you major takes. I'll tell you the job. You decide if you want it or not. I can get money, guns, cars, anything you need. What are you guys looking at? I, I still kind of feel like they were, they had already gone out before. <laughs> I don't think they had. He tells her, like, hey, how about we go out? And she agrees. Why is he explaining to her it, it does, that I, he's a thief? Now, do you get my point of I don't think, no, no, I think Frank would do this? I think he had gone out with her a few times already, and when he brings up to Willie Nelson, like, he's basically saying, yeah, I... I know this girl, whatever. And that's what we'll get to that part. I, it does not feel like a first interaction to me, the way he's looking at her. It looks like he's excited to see her again. And I, I really feel like he says it, it comes off like they've gone out a few times already. He says, I've been coming in here and getting coffee and we've been looking at each other for like eight weeks. What, when they're in the car and he's, like, yelling at her? When he forcefully <laughs> drags her out of a club that she clearly does uh, not want to leave. Okay. I. It just seemed odd that she would stick around for a guy for two hours for the first date as well. But I thought that as well. Like, I was like, okay, so they, like, Maybe he they were on and off whenever he was with his wife. Let me boot like this up she, on Paramount Plus real quick and watch this scene. <clears throat> maybe they were like he was cheating on his wife. This was his like side lady, and now he wants to make it official. But then I was like, no, like this is the first time they've. I they think it's their first this. date. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, oh, and that's why I have the issue with. Like, why would he just, why would this turn his world to where all this trouble starts for, for if he doesn't know this lady, like I get that's part of his collage and that's what he wants, but listen, every, every time he goes up and he pays a bill, that's a date. (laughs) Well, Dan, you already said he's 50. I mean, if he waits too long, he's going to look dumb as hell at the parent-teacher conference with a bunch of 20-year-olds that he can't hang with. This fucking guy keeps running by my house. Is he casing the joint? Oh, I'm about to go out there with a gun. Is your safe locked up? My safes are locked up, Kron. My family is sleeping. It's a perfect time to strike. You're arguing about whether or not James Conn took this girl out already. 
Oh, he just shouted. They knew each other. <laughs> okay. All right, so Leo is like, why don't you come work for me? Frank says, I'm my own boss. Leo says, this could be very lucrative for both of us. Two, three jobs. You can walk away whenever you want. Frank's basically like, I'll think about it. He goes to find Jesse. She's pissed. He's over two hours late. <laughs> Some guys try to separate him, uh, but Frank, like, pulls a gun on this dude, or at least, like, pulls his shirt up, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. A little William Peterson. Well, Will Pete. Yeah. Uh, outside the bar, there's a, another couple people trying to stop Frank, but he pushes them and then causes, like, a traffic accident as he peels out. So, man originally wanted all blue, like, Chicago blues music for this whole thing. And then quickly realized it wouldn't work. So this was kind of like his, all right, I need to throw some Chicago blues in there. That would have been terrible, right? I think the Tangerine Dream score was the way to go. Yeah. Did you guys know uh, the score to this movie got nominated for a Razzie? Yeah. As like worst that. score? That's insane. No Oscar nod for James Conn, I don't think, right? Or maybe he did get one. I'm less bummed out about that than the Razzie thing. <laughs> what a crock of shit. The fine folks at the Razzie organization should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, yeah. I, hey, man, I feel guilty every time we give something a one star or we read our list and we have to acknowledge that there's stuff at the bottom of it, but to have a whole organization aimed at the worst of something is kind of shitty. Mm -hmm. Well, also I think it, there's just a huge track record of them being incredibly wrong too. Yeah. I mean, stuff that is like at the time, I guess people didn't get it, but it's come around and it's like one of the most respected films now. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just a shitty organization. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you feel like a fool, don't you, boy? Yeah, once we all come around to Holly Berry's Catwoman, they'll feel so stupid. I thought you were going to say her and Swordfish. I was like, I was there. Mm -hmm. Totally. Her, yeah, her we all were. Swordfish performance That's is That's why incredible. we were there. Immaculate. The, the part where she drops that newspaper, dude. The part where she's... Like reading the newspaper. It's a one million dollar scene. Mm -hmm. I would have paid double. <laughs> she got fleeced. That really kicked off. Like when you walk around a car, it changes color. Like that paint job. I still see it to to this day. I'm like swordfish. I remember that. We've, we've already covered everything I remember about Swordfish. I was going to say, I don't remember how that movie starts or ends. It or starts story. It starts with the ending. So you get the cool little uh, bullet yeah, time yeah. scene. He's going to pick Swordfish, ain't he? I haven't watched it in a real long time, so. Why do they call it Swordfish. It's like a password or a... Oh, that's right. Something? The computer Bones. program or something. I don't know. When's the last time you watched Swordfish? Uh, <laughs> it's like yesterday. No, 20-something <laughs> years ago. Really? Yeah, we you watched... You remember that much? Yeah. yeah, I watch movies, man. I, like, recall them. Uh, uh, computer run swordfish.exe. Almost 20 years ago because I think we watched it on a portable DVD player coming back from a wrestling tournament. Oh, shit. And everybody was like, the scene's coming up, the scene's coming up. We were all like super stoked. She dropped the oh, newspaper. What? Computer in hands. Yeah. But I was thought, it playing on like the bus DVD screens? No, it was one of those like laptop sized portable ones. Um, Yeah, that was a big deal. 
because kind of dependent on how we did as a team at said tournament determined whether or not we were going to watch something on the way back. Otherwise, you know, you're sitting in silence. Not me. I was listening to the fucking Matrix soundtrack or Spawn soundtrack. No, maybe uh, chocolate starfish in a hot dog flavored water, something like that. You know, a corn album. Yeah, corn on the way there. I can't. Li- I can't listen to corn on the way home. I'm gonna be all sad. I remember there was an assembly one time for wrestling, and it seemed like the guy on the team got a boner. You guys remember this? Uh, no, I do not. Maybe it was after you graduated. Are you going to make an, another announcement? Tonight? Some dudes just got fucking big soft dongs, man. I mean, it's just, just it was hogs. a school it was a school assembly yeah. to watch wrestling and I swear the one guy he's chubbed up, dude. Uh, Are you partaking in God, I hope it wasn't product? me. It wasn't you. Okay, good. I think you were you were out of the school by then. But yeah, we we left you in high school for a little bit. Yeah, I guess I kind of get it. I mean, like if you're a you know warrior mindset, it's all rolled up into one thing together, you know. Yeah, I mean, you seen those dudes in Apocalypto? They were hard as rocks. I mean, it you know, it kind of went with the pillaging. I so. <laughs> I guess if you win, I, you know. I just think the dude probably had floppy some, dong. some beef, man. You don't wear a cup? No, nah, you would. I mean, some people do or did, but I would not recommend it. No, nah, it fucking cuts into you. Maybe this guy should have just for the big one, you know, the one where everyone was watching yeah. in the school. Maybe he fucking threw a sock down there so people would. No, Be it was. He's like, you know? this is the big one. It was. It was tubular. I remember. <laughs> it was not just a so- sock situation. Socks famously, uh, you know, untubular. This was not sock shaped. You got another five more seconds, and I'm writing that as a show note. So. <laughs> it was a. It was not a sock. Oh, you were you were seeing some, some mushroom. Yeah, you could, you could make it out. How close were you? Where were you sitting? First, first row, dude. <laughs> With his opera glasses. I was getting mm-hmm. water for him. Yeah, we're doing fights at school. Yeah, I'm gonna pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> All right, in the car, Frank says, uh, "What do you think I do?" She says, "You sell cars." Says I wear one hundred and fifty dollars pants, silk shirts, eight hundred dollars suits, a gold watch. I have a perfect D flawless three carat ring. I change cars like other guys change shoes. I'm a thief. Take a shot. So he wears one hundred fifty dollars pants, eight hundred dollars shirts. So he's wearing eight hundred dollars suits. Or that's what I mean. Yeah. So he's wearing six hundred and fifty dollars blazers. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder he needs to do another fucking job. Is it a three? Dude. Is it a three piece? Is the yeah, vest? Probably, there's bucks? probably a vest. The shop at Sears, guy. Save all kinds of money. Hell no, dude. This shit's custom. Do you guys own a suit? Have we talked about this before? I got a. I got like a navy blue suit. I do, but it does not fit me. I'm sure. Positive of that. I, f- I felt pretty good the last time I tried to put mine on because I couldn't get the sleeves over my arms. Because <laughs> I got them a few years ago when I was when I just lost weight and I was running all the time. But now that I've bulked up, I was like, ah, shit. I couldn't get the pants on. It was definitely a little tight around the waist and my thighs were blowing it out, but... So. Did you put it on and flexed and every piece of it ripped off your I body? I wish. I wish. But nobody die. I swear. I I have little micro panic attacks thinking about like, fuck, I have nothing to wear to a funeral. That's the worst part of a funeral or a wedding is like, God damn, I got to go buy like, I got to go buy $500 worth of clothes now <laughs> yeah. for this. 
<laughs> well, then I show up to like a visitation and I'm wearing, yeah, like $35 Walmart slacks that barely fit and a shirt that's really ill tucked in. And I'm not taking off my winter coat for the sake of, uh, I just want to not look like a, a 15 year old kid who threw this together. It's just a visitation, man. Wow, and I guess I, I guess Bones it. didn't respect Cron very much. Yeah. We're wearing jeans at your funeral, motherfucker. Yes, please. I uh, that should Come be. Come on, man. They're never gonna find the body, dude. There's not gonna be a funeral. Even better. <laughs> Send in a video. Hey guys, Laundry Dan here. Cron Howard actually had a podcast. There's 666 episodes. Damn, dude. Cron Play paid him. Holly Berry a million dollars to hide his body after he died. I want at my funeral for all these episodes to play one after the other before. <laughs> and uh, you can't unlock the doors until they're all done. Fuck. That'd be horrid. Mm-hmm. I'd one be la- cracking up. I, one last gotcha from Kron. I would take the time. I'd make a super cut of all the heinous shit you've said. I want that. And then I want everyone to sing the Monster Mash. And there's a scavenger hunt for my teeth. Oh, and everyone takes a bullshit. It's, it's funny you said teeth because I wanted those uh I want those Joker laughing dentures. <laughs> I just want you to pop out and just like wave every like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I'll do that. I'll shove my hand up your ass and work you like a puppet. <laughs> we'll get a get Phil Bro. Tippett on the phone to fucking <laughs> Mad God 4. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Moment of truth. Let's see what Kron was working with here. Oh, it's bigger than he said. Pay up, motherfuckers. This guy must have wrestled. (laughs) All right, over coffee, Frank just kind of lays it all out with Jesse. He's like, let's skip the shit. Uh, I have run out of time. I can't run fast enough to catch up. I'm asking you to be with me. Jesse says, I can't do it. I can't have children. Frank says, we'll adopt. Uh... He says, let's give it a shot. Jesse agrees. So they do just like, they power through the beginning of a relationship. Mm-hmm. And she, we get a lot of her backstory about how her ex was like a drug dealer, and left her in Columbia. Mm-hmm. So it's, I like it because it's not, uh, it makes it believable that she would, you know, already have some experience with a sort of shady character. I think Frank also tells a story about when he was in prison. Like he <clears throat> sounded like he was just in there for like a year, but then, you know, some guys had like a whole like a rape operation going on and he just like beat the shit out of all of them with a pipe. But he kind of ends that whole thing with being like, I had no fear anymore. Like I was untouchable after that. Mm hmm. Like that Frank is willing to go beyond, you know, what people can comprehend to like achieve what he needs to do. Yeah, you can't, you can't get anything over on me by trying to scare me or pressure me. Do you, when you watch movies that involve prison or you hear shit about prison, do you start to have like a panic attack about, fuck, what would I do if I ever went to prison? And then, no, dude, I would eat the barrel of a gun if I was going to One hundred percent, yes, yes. I, I tell Sam this all the time. I don't care if it's just a six month stint. I'm killing myself. I'm, I yeah. will not go fucking. Um, that dude in Collateral. I'm never going back inside. No, if they were like, we're putting you into the like hardcore prison, I'd be like, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. But then I immediately just think like, oh yeah, I'm not a shithead. Like, yeah. Uh, why, why am I worried about this? I'm not a fucking criminal, but I, you do I'm worry because you're like, what's the, you never know what manslaughter beef you might get, you know? Mm-hmm. Good. Get hemmed up tomorrow. 
some lady just says you did such 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 or man whichever one Michael man it's two ends there are too many laws in this country <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ dude, dude. <laughs> what the f- <laughs> I don't know if that's the sentence you should follow up like bring back the south you're wearing a black rifle coffee hat Her coffee's terrible. You keep never, sending. I've never had it. You keep sending us Joe Rogan clips, dude. <laughs> Through my ex account, <laughs> guys. That's uh, right. I still got an ex account. <laughs> I d- really don't want it to get political, but I don't know what's going on in your guys' neighborhood. But we are definitely having a flag off in my neighborhood between the Israeli flags and the Palestinian flags. Oh, shit. So what side are you do, on, dude? I am, just put out I am, a fucking nuclear. <laughs> yeah. I am, I'm not touching it, but... yeah. You we, should just get a flag that's like cold beer or... You know, beer like and a, titties. Yeah. Beer, titties, and tacos. I bet corn, corn's probably got a flag you can buy. I, Metallica, I 100% dude. had a corn flag. Yes. Did you really? Yeah. I had a. I gave you a Slipknot flag. I know mm-hmm. that. I had a. Was, I made an awesome new metal collage to take to me or take with me to college. Hey, because, Jesse, this is my vision board. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> I made a collage to take with me to to me college. <laughs> That's to me Cor- higher education. That's Corey from Slipknot. I want my education to be as big as his neck. Well rounded and thick. All right, Frank goes and calls Leo. He says, "Did I'm you in. really make a collage?" I did. Yeah, I cut up like a bunch of revolvers, magazines, and stuff because I was like, "I want to hang this stuff up," but I don't. I wanted to have it manageable, so I made like a cool yeah. little collage of all my favorite metal artists and just had a poster board that went up. I put it over my bulletin board, so then I would have you know, notes and stuff just pierced into that. So it was fucking Swiss cheese by the time I left that first year. Frank calls Leo. He says, one big score and I'm out. I bet the iPhone changed your life. Yeah, but there's something cathartic about physical collage, right? Mm -hmm. I think, I think December 22nd, we should present each other with our collages just a regular sheet of paper nothing i'm not crazy. cutting up my jugs magazines <laughs> <laughs> fuck you dude they are collectors they are, items they're already falling apart cron <laughs> oh, they're stiff as a board dude you couldn't get a pair of scissors through them <laughs> say you've, you've thrown away a few all right frank meets with leo on, on the roof of a high rise Scoping out, out now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> They're scoping out a heist. A few major problems. One, the safest top of the line. You Jug- can't drill through Jugs it. Jugs had to put out like a 3D magazine, right? Like of, of any of the porno mags. That's the perfect one. How would you ever go out of business with the name of Jugs? <laughs> like everybody should have invested in that, yes. Like, God damn it. Those boys are making their dreams come true. How are there so many shades of brown? (laughs) This is a... This is a color chart I built from areolas from jugs. I mean, it's the perfect form. If it's the center page, you get that natural fold and bump. Mm -hmm. There's built-in physical cleavage. God. All right, this safe can't be drilled. It's got to be burned. The other major problem is the alarm system. There are five in total, four are conventional, but the fifth they can't figure out. It goes out to some private line. Frank asks, is it worth it? 
Leo says over four million in cash and diamonds. Frank goes to see a metal smelter. Uh, he says this is going to be a hell of a job. Portable equipment, at least seven to eight thousand degrees, and it's going to be hell to use. Cut over to Frank at court. There's a lawyer and a judge. They're doing hand motions to figure out how much the payoff needs to be to get Okla released. Uh, eventually, they come to a conclusion. I think it's like 6000 Frank's like, there's 10 in the this fucking manila envelope. Go buy yourself a new suit. Frank and Jesse head over to an adoption agency. The lady reviewing their file asks Frank about his past. He's like, all right, I was a fucking convict lady. Like, what do you want me to say? Adoption lady isn't having it. It's far from the worst thing he says in this conversation, <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, Frank basically offers to take whatever garbage kid they've got laying around at the adoption agency. He's pissed. He says, we're good people. He says, I was raised in the state system. It's a dead place. Where were you raised? The suburbs? They basically get kicked out of the adoption agency. Cut over to Frank driving around. A couple cops pull him over. They know that he's working with Leo. Uh, they're showing up to explain that they get a cut. They want 10% of whatever Frank pulls down. He says, if you want to pinch me, pinch me. I'll be out in 10 minutes. If not, get the fuck off the car. <laughs> Frank goes home. He's paranoid. Finds a like a wire tap in his phone. He runs some water. Tells Jesse like we're bugged. You know this is getting like over our heads at this point. I would have loved if they got closer to that running water though. Like if their heads were in the sink. <laughs> kind of like you're rinsing your mouth out after you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those heathens like me that doesn't keep a cup on the counter, but. Who keeps a cup on the counter? There's some people that don't they don't get their head down there and, and rinse it out that way. They they fill up a cup and they s spit. It's just a Listerine after I brush. Hardcore. You floss first, then brush, and then Listerine? Floss. So the morning is just a brush. Night, floss, brush, Listerine. I don't floss that much. I'm not going to lie. You should floss more than your brush. No, I've, ne I've never <laughs> I've never gotten anything from a dentist that said I needed to floss more, so I'm okay. When I shower, floss I fucking I put the <laughs> fucking faucet right up on my grill and just blast it. It's like a built-in water pick. And a water board. <laughs> yeah, I'm building up a tolerance. I have no fear. It's coming. This guy won't crack. What am I, uh, brushing my teeth over here, huh? It's another day at the dentist, boys. Yeah, you tell your dentist. <laughs> hey, can you put that towel over my face and just fucking dump a gallon on my head? Put my bib over my face. That towel's over my crotch, though. I get so turned on. Look like a wrestler at the mm, old school my assembly. Teeth polished. Mm. Better not give me bubble gum. Mm -mm. Frank goes to his bar to visit Leo. Uh, Leo says, hey, I'm lining up these shopping centers. I can invest your money. Frank says, my money goes in my pocket. Leo says, no problem. Just let me know later. I feel like they really should have worked this conversation out. Frank's pissed. Uh, he's saying, dude, I got all this attention now. I got bugs on my car, bugs on my phone. Cops are hassling me. Random guys are hitting me up in court for fur coats. Leo says, don't worry. I'll take care of all of it. Is that Paul Giamatti? No. The guy at the courtroom who asked yeah. him for the fur? Yeah. 
I don't think so. Seems a little early for Giamani. Damn it. Leo says, what else is up? Frank says, nothing. Leo says, I know you want a kid. I can get you a kid. Frank hesitates, but this is like all that he wants for the last week. So he's like, (laughs) all right, I'll play ball. I want a boy. Leo says it's done. It's Frank. The switch on Leo is so crushing, particularly like on a rewatch when you watch the scene because he is, he's so loving in this booth. Like you want, you want to buy in and believe that this is a guy worth working for, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful villain. Yeah. Frank gets a call. He rushes over to the hospital. Okla is dying. Uh, Okla whispers something to Frank. They kind of rush everybody out of the room. Doctors pronounce Okla dead. And Frank just kind of like stares blankly at this doctor. Like, Seems like he's unable to process what just happened. Yeah, the doctor was actually scared in real life. He thought uh, James Conn was going to, like, punch him or something. I could see it in the performance. <laughs> he keeps being like, are you all right? Like, do you want to go sit down? Do you think doctors often ask themselves, like, is this guy that I'm talking to the main character of a movie right now because seems to happen a lot in movies just random doctor having to tell a hero that their friend died it's like, what's up with these fucking cameras again <laughs> I'm in three fourths of a hospital what the hell's going on or did somebody think, want to become a cop or a, a doctor because they were like, God, that looks so fucking cool. <laughs> and they've never just, done it yet. Yeah, just telling a distraught person that their loved one died. Like, where the fuck are all like the main character guys in movies that I gotta tell? Mm-hmm. They're like, Oh, that only happens like once in your career, dude. <laughs> so you think like the first guy that dies on a doctor, he's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> he walks out, he's like Where's the, f- the fucking cameras at? Where are the friends and family? <laughs> it's my big time. Tom Cruise, here I come. You're going to want an audience for this. Uh, Frank and Jesse go to pick up their baby. Over dinner, they decide to name him after Okla, whose real name was David. What? We get some more prep scenes here. Frank tests out the torch. Uh, His buddy is able to make the fifth alarm. It goes over a private radio signal, and the code word is Mexico. Back at that Chinese food restaurant or Asian food restaurant, every time I watch this, I forget about that waiter. And I think, like, is he in Leo's crew or something? The waiter? Yeah, he just gets a lot of attention. Like, What's the baby's name? For just for the name. I know, the but I, I I know. He's just trying to get an extra dollar in fair, tip. Fair enough. Pones, this is the first time that he's met this waiter. I don't I think he and the waiter have, have fucking gone out before. <laughs> I like, can't wait for the fucking <laughs> Discord response of what a fucking idiot. Obviously they had only gone out. Like I'd be interested to see if anybody else got the vibe that they had gone out a few times beforehand. But if if it's Discord, we already know that everybody agrees with Bones because they're scared of you. <laughs> Funny, guys, you don't have to be scared. I'm the nicest of the three. Why would anybody be scared of me? What? How am I not nice? What the fuck, I, dude? I, nicest, nicest doesn't mean that you're not nice. I'm nice. Okay. I don't want to be nice. You want to fuck all of you. You want to do the next round of merch? Me? No. No, I I already paid for the Plex. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Dan handles 
audio storage. You handle merch, and I cover the Plex. Audio storage. That's what that's what my job is title is. You know, like a fucking it's, Podbean. It's or just merch it that I do. It's that's not social media guru do, over here. You do merch and editing. I do Plex and Google Drive. I have Google Drive. I have Google Drive. <laughs> Did you pay the twenty dollars? I paid the ten dollars a month for the one terabyte. Oh, huge mistake, dude. <laughs> they fuck. They saw a sucker coming, dude. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, Frank gets pulled over by some dirty cops. They bring him in for a busted tail light, which they kick in themselves. <laughs> he says it before he even kicks it. <laughs> mm-hmm. They take him into a little room, beat the shit out of him. They explain, like, dude, you better play ball. Frank again is like, fuck you. That's not my thing. These cops are really after Frank now. They're just waiting for him to slip up. Frank's able to lose these cops as he's driving around. I think he puts the tracker on, like, a bus that's headed to Des Moines. Is that what yeah. you got, Dan? Yeah, because I think they lose him for a second. And yeah. And kind of come back in. It's kind of conf- uh, it's kind of confusing the way they shoot that scene. And then, yeah, you kind of get a cut, and then yeah, it's, it says Des Moines on the bus, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and it, it shows as it goes by the bus like a little silver disc. So I think he likes, but it's also very dark, you know? I mean, I don't know. But I think that's what they're trying to imply, that he put the, whatever tracker was on his car on the side of the bus. Yeah, because I don't think there's like a conclusion of they were like, oh, shit, it's on the bus. I think mm-hmm. it just kind of goes by and you just assume. Well, they don't want to admit that. How embarrassing. You followed this bus all the way to Des Moines. Now, in 81, we gave our audience some credit. We don't have to fucking spoon feed them. Yeah, this isn't Ant-Man. <laughs> Cut over to the heist. That's a good uh, reference because he deals with spoons because he works at Baskin Robbins in Ant-Man. And they Does got those really? little plastic spoons. That's the only job he can get because he's a convict. There's some fucking scene in there where he's like, I love eating at Baskin Robbins, all 32 flavors. You know what goes great with my Baskin Robbins? Coca Cola. Are you I, comparing Ant Man? Is Ant Man thief? No, I don't know. I've never he seen Ant Man. But he is a thief. That's why he went to jail. He was an electrical I, engineer and then became a thief. I think I watched the first one and I can't even. That's I don't I don't even. Remember. That's how he meets Hank Pym because he gets hired to go in and steal the tech. Dude, I I checked out like forty Marvel movies ago. Good for you. <laughs> Who's got the fucking time? We seen a preview for that. Lady Spider Man one, Madam Spider Woman, Madam Web, Madam Web. That is one of the funniest trailers in years. It looked like a CW like show. I was like, oh my god! And it was on the IMAX screen, and I was like, this looks terrible. <laughs> we cut over to the heist. They've got a hole cut in the roof. Uh, they pull out a bunch of wires. They start testing them and, like, capping all the alarms. Finally, they get into the vault room. Uh, Frank does trip the fifth alarm, but he picks up the radio, says Mexico. Everything turns off. We cut over to the guys in the room now. Frank hooks up the torch. His buddy lights it. They start cutting a hole in the vault, uh, like, to create a new little door. Two guys are working the torch. One guy's spraying out the sparks that hit the ground. Uh, Looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks like they really did this. It's awesome. Like they were fucking burning shit in, you know, and filming it. Uh, Finally, they get into the safe. We get a great shot where James Caan just sets down in a chair and kind of gives like maybe the first time he smiled in the entire movie. He's, like, proud of himself. 
Mission accomplished. Cut over to everyone. They're having a fun beach day. Frank and his buddy, who is Belushi, uh, they're just kind of hanging out at the beach, running around. Belushi does tackle his ri- his wife real good. <laughs> Frank goes to meet with Leo. It's time to collect. But just one problem. Frank's only given 10% of his cash. Leo says, don't worry about it, dude. I invested all your money in that shopping center I was telling you about. He's like, I also got a major score lined up in Palm Beach. Frank says, fuck that, dude. This is payday. It's over. Leo says, you don't play ball. You don't pay off the cops. I give you a house, a car, a family, a kid. I thought you'd come around. Frank says, I can see my money still in your pocket. That is the yield of my labor, my risk, my sweat. I want my money and I'm out. Leo says, join a labor union. Frank says, I'm fucking wearing it. Leo's goons get up real quick. They start breaking this shit up. Uh, Frank says, you've got 24 hours to get me the rest of my money. He races back to the car dealership. Belushi is there. Uh, Leo sent some goons as well. They've kind of got him pinned up. They're like, tell him to come over here. Uh, Belushi calls out to him, but as soon as he does, he warns Frank this is a setup. They throw Belushi and fucking shotgun him, like right in the chest. Looks great. Yep. They get Frank back over to Leo's place. Uh, Leo's like, dude, now you're going to learn. Everything you have is mine. If you don't get in line, your wife's going to be standing on a street corner selling her ass. I own your kid because I bought him. He's like, get back to work, Frank. Frank leaves. He gets cleaned up. He goes home, tells Jesse, wake up the kid. You're going away. Don't pack a bag. Don't take anything. You're out. Here's four hundred and ten thousand dollars. This is where I got the. This is where four hundred thousand was stuck in my head. Was mm-hmm. this amount that he gives her? Uh, Frank's other buddy, the guy who's like the wheel man, Joseph. He he's like Joseph's gonna come over. The first month he's with you, you're gonna pay him twenty thousand dollars. Second month, twenty five, thirty. After that, she's like, "Why are you doing this?" Frank says, to hell with you, to hell with everything. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) It's like real harsh, but I mean, I guess he's already like, he's all ready to burn the whole thing down. You know what I mean? And we understand why. Mm Mm-hmm. It's still, I think it's a tough scene because it's like, you feel for this lady that doesn't even know what the hell is happening. Yeah. Uh, Joseph picks up Jesse and, and David, and they all take off. And I think never once in the scene do I go, just leave with her. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much set up already where you just know this isn't this, he won't run. He can't run. This is not in his nature. Uh, particularly like the, the story that you, you mentioned when they're at the diner, with him in jail, that's not his way, which mm-hmm. I think is great because a lot of movies, there's always that uh, that you as the viewer, you're like, oh man, if you just if you just went with her, this wouldn't be an issue. But and it's not even a, an ego or pride thing. It's just it's so ingrained in him. Yeah, I think to Frank, I mean, or maybe get the big job over with and then do the family thing. But would you? It just, it seems like to me that he's of the mindset of like, even if I leave, this never ends. Like they'll track me down. We'll be on the run forever. Yeah. Like there's only one way out of this and it's me or him. Yeah. You know? Dan, do you think he's actually going to get any money out of the next big job? It'll probably be the same. Here's 50,000 and I've also fucking, you're you're now invested in go-karts and fucking santa fe now you know i mean i don't disagree with what leo did because 1985 86 anti-labor 
No, fucking malls were going off the fucking chain, bro. That was like the cool shit. So he yeah, had but to be making some cash. It's not his money to invest, dude. It I doesn't understand matter. I that, but I'm saying in the long run, Leo might have been right. Oh, I, 100% buying real estate in Dallas, Fort Worth in the 80s. Jacksonville? Yeah. yeah. Sit on it a little bit, but. Yeah, but. I mean, there's also no guarantee that that's what Leo did with the money. I mean, 100. Leo could just be like, hey, dude, here's $50,000. Like, I know I owe you close to a million, but it's like, I'm investing it for, you know, it could just yeah. be like every month I'll I'll kick you 10 grand and call that, you know, your end. No telling how many fucking people are on his payroll that he's paying off with the fruits of Khan's labor. Uh, Frank gets up instantly. He burns the house to the ground, drives over to his car dealership, blows it up, uh, blows up his bar. Kind of of the mindset of, you know, if you're backed into a corner, but you burn down all the walls, (laughs) you know, you're not stuck anymore. Uh, let's see. Frank drives over to Leo's house. Now I take, I also took this as I'm probably going to die and I don't want to leave anything that Leo could then just take over. Like leave nothing remaining of mine for him to take. Is there any, you guys take it any other way? Or just I, I I can start over. There's nothing left for them to. Maybe it's just like a. I know I'm gonna get, like I said, the some people are gonna be after me after this. So, maybe there's no evidence there. Maybe. Hmm. I take it more as like just the personal decision of like. Like Leo's always gonna have something over me. But if I literally have nothing, then I'm the most dangerous man in the world to him. Because, like, there is nothing left for him to dangle. Like, he can't say, I'll destroy your businesses because that's already done, you know? Yeah, you have nothing to threaten me with. Mm -hmm. Or he's like, the insurance is fucking going to be great on this. (laughs) I think if your house and both businesses blow up in the same night... uh, Insurance is going to take an extra careful eye on that one. <laughs> Corporate <laughs> might drag their feet. Hack, yeah. Anybody else's car insurance go up a hundred percent in the last uh, year? Mine jumped about forty nine dollars a month more. <sighs> mine didn't go up a hundred percent, but that's rough. Yeah, no, I, I, did you hit a did you hit a pedestrian or something? No, no there's something I because I called and they're like, well, the state of Missouri has decided that blah 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 needs to have an increase, and that was all they would give me. And I was like, well, is there any way to? She's like, well, you could take some of your car stuff out. I'm like, yep, yeah, but then I don't have that whenever. I need it. <laughs> and she's like, well, that's about it. It's like, cool. That's cool that she was like, have you considered driving uninsured? <laughs> she was like, you could take this, this, this option out that you have, which is for my wife. I'll just burn my truck. I don't, I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't have a truck, they can't hold it over you. <laughs> I mean, this is electrical lady. Hey, Anytime you need Crown and I to come over and blow up your house at business. Well, I'm talking about the cars, you guys. Let us know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll blow up your car. Sure. I'll light your car Here's... on fire and then throw a brick on the gas pedal and it drive right into your house. No. Yeah. I'm kind of going to be neighbor's in neighbor's house. I'm kind of going to be in like a firebug mood if I take your car out, so I'm probably going to burn your house down too. <laughs> It's so hard to stop once you start. Yours went up 100%? 
Damn near. Did you call or? I get the same thing. It's like, well, you could, you know, do whatever it is to reduce your uh, comprehensive and collision coverage, but. Raking us over the coal. Fuckers. God damn it. God damn. We're almost done. Thanks. Socialist. Sorry, Kron. All right. Frank drives over to Leo's house. He sneaks in through a back door. Uh, A tag Leo is in there who is like, hey, do you want any milk? I could fucking kill for a big glass of milk right now. Ataglia gets up, goes to the kitchen. Frank knocks him out. He sees Leo's, I guess, wife and pulls a gun on her, and she barely even looks up. Just, yeah, this shit's was coming. Does, <laughs> it does seem, uh, what's his name, Ataglia? Yeah. So this guy was the f- chief operating officer of like the phony plating company. Yep. But then he's Leo's number one bodyguard too at night. Yeah. I thought that was, that does weird. seem a little odd that he might run like a few different businesses though. Like he could just kind of oversee operations. You okay. know what I mean? Maybe it was just his week to be there. At the plate company. Oh, like there's like eight guys playing the Taglia? <laughs> maybe they're, well, maybe he has his multiple of his day. I go over there and be a boss. A Taglia is just a code name. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was weird too. I was like, I thought this guy like ran his own shit. Makes it easier for Leo to remember all of his goons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just yell a Taglia and someone will come running. <laughs> He pushes the fucking milk button and somebody comes running in with a glass. Uh, That's a way better scenario than what the milk button could mean. So. Frank searches. If the the milk button is next to a hole in the wall, (laughs) I'm not pushing it. Well, you don't get to control when it gets pushed. You. You can only control how you respond to the milk button. Leo gets to push the milk button. Get out of any room that has a milk button. Frank, uh, let's see. Frank searches the house for Leo, who's not in the chair that we just saw him in. Eventually, Frank turns a corner. Leo pops out. Frank takes him out with a couple shots and then finishes him off with one in the head. Uh, Frank walks outside. Ataglia is running away. A bunch of Leo's goons show up. Frank kills all of them. Finally puts one in Ataglia's back. In all this crossfire, Frank does get shot, but he's able to finish off the guy who shot him, which is, uh, what's his name, Farina, Cousin Abby. Wounded. Wounded and bleeding, Frank gets up and walks down the street. Guys, that's the end. Thief, 1981, directed by Michael Mann. Dan, do you have any further research on this thing? Gentlemen, upon further research, Thief from 1981, directed by Michael Mann, was released March 27th of 1981, had a budget of five point five million and a worldwide box office of eleven point four million. It was a hit. That week at the box office. Yeah, but they could... they took a bunch of the profits and reinvested them in a, a mini mall in Santa Fe. Probably still making money. Uh that week at the theater, at the cinema, you could also catch Eyes of a Stranger. It is a horror thriller featuring Lauren Twin Twess and Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, the next week, Atlantic City would uh, open up with Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon. And the week before that, The Postman Always Rings Twice with Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah, he did a remake of it. Uh, I watched that one day. It's not that great. But it's it's like the original is already there. Like 
And it's a good movie. And that the fifties version and the the original. Yeah, yeah. But there is like a real uh like raunchy sex scene in the Jack Nicholson one. Features Jessica Lang as well. Also a movie called Cutter's Way, which featured uh Jeff Bridges and John Hurd. Um also Jeff Bridges was the first person considered by Michael Mann for uh the lead role, but the studio said no, he does not look like a hardened criminal. Too young in the face, that that Bridges boy. Uh Bones 410 might be right because it says uh, 410,000 in 1981 equals 1.32 million in 2002. So I guess we might need to go back to the tape to see. 410 is what 410 is what he gives Jesse yeah. to leave. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, because pay such and such 20 the first month, 25. Okay. Yeah, so by today's standards, he should have netted somewhere around like $2.1 million for the heist if he was going to get roughly 840 Not bad. It doesn't matter. Money does not exist. It's all zeros and ones. <laughs> Dude's fucking it, matrix. Dude. Investing. Tell that to uh, my mattress. Right, keep all my money. Uh, this movie does this contain similar sleeping elements. Sleeping on the Matrix? What? Contain, contains similar elements, lingo, and themes for Michael Mann's Heat, which was made in 1995. Uh, the dining, the diner scene, James Caan does say this is his best work besides The Godfather. Uh, all real props were used in the film. There were no false props, so they actually learned... How to use the the fucking drill, which was like sixty, like five pounds, I guess. Uh, they sent James Con to Arizona to take uh, shooting lessons, like when he's in the Leo's house at the end. So that's all real training that he did. I thought he looks pretty uh, how- good when he switches the mag out, and he kind of flicks it. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, I think he was down there for like a week learning all that shit. Uh, if this features features similar dialogue to Heat, I mean, does anyone call anyone a fucking goof in Heat? Because maybe that's what's what's Tell keeping me. me from loving it so much. Uh, Al Pacino turned down the role of Frank due to scheduling conflicts. Hoo-ah. <laughs> and, I mean, there's... There's quite a bit out there, but I think we kind of covered the good stuff. Like I said, this is a film debut for Jim Belushi, William Peterson, Dennis Farnia. Farina? uh, Protsky over there. Chronicles of Farnia? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I was going for. Uh, a 60,000 gallon water truck was used to keep the streets constantly wet because that's just a Michael Mann thing. He likes them wet ass roads. You mentioned the weight of the props. Fucking movies love to hype that shit up. Oh, the suit, the suit weighed 50 pounds. It's like, okay, yeah. I spent eight hours in makeup a day. Yeah. Yeah. You also got paid. Thirty-five million. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I could do all that shit for that amount of money. <laughs> Easy. Some kid at Walmart pushed over uh, six tons of carts in the eight hours that you were sitting in a makeup chair. Okay, he made a fraction of what you made. Quit complaining. Forty-five bucks. <laughs> I had to lift something sixty-five pounds twice. Okay. Well, it wasn't a David Fincher movie, so shut the fuck up. That. Maybe be the only director now that I would... Okay, yeah, shit. He had to do it 40 times? Okay. And I only got $38 million. But gentlemen, yeah, that's all I got for for Thief. 
a five star banger. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Cron. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Can't wait to hear how much you love Ant Man more than this movie. Ah, uh, Thief. Michael Mann. I had originally, I had to sit in my letterbox at a four, Cron. Mm-hmm. Um, not much negative. I mean, I, I'm, for the sake of good drama in the podcast, but quite honestly, I really do enjoy this movie. I think it's uh, visually striking. Um, it's concise character work. I believe the performances are incredible. Uh, there's a lot of subtext, but also at the same time, the movie isn't hiding anything. And I, th- I think pretty much every actor delivers on what they need to do. Um, I think I am going to bump this up to a 4.5. Not quite a 5. Um, I don't think it would be in my my top top man movies. But it's a great foundation for what comes. I 100% agree that Thief leads to heat. Um, 4.5, dude. Thief, 1981, directed by Michael Mann, is sitting at a 4.1 with the letterbox review at the time of this five-star banger. Uh, I had this sitting at a three. I mentioned earlier that I had heard a lot of talk about this film and finally got my eyes on it and, I don't know, was kind of underwhelmed. But uh, I think this viewing, I'm, I'm bumping it up to a four. Like I said, my only, my only issue is the whole like jumping into the getting the kid and getting married thing. I honestly think if you, I said not, not to say that Tuesday, well, Tuesday Weld is her name. Mm-hmm. She does a good job. She's a good actress. But if if they would have took that out, I, I don't know. I think it, I think we would have had a perfectly fine movie. But uh, great dialogue here. It looks fucking amazing. Uh, like I said, it's a dynamite movie. I think the the Tangerine Dream score is fucking phenomenal. Like I said, I think this is uh, I'm bumping it up to a four. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's a blue blueprint for heat, and I think it's it's a good movie. I like it. Good con performance. Probably the last great con performance, maybe. Elf. I mean, I know I know you guys are elf fans, so yeah, we're big elf heads, me and Bones. So, all right, guys, thief. Uh, just from a filmmaking perspective, choosing to shoot everything so dark and then using like this incredibly soft light, light that's like reflected off of street signs and puddles and ambient lighting from your big green bar sign outside. Uh, Like all that works. It's kind of both film noir in a way, but also, um, you know, adding in the, the neon element that would kind of propel this into eighties and nineties filmmaking. Uh, The score is absolutely incredible. One of my, probably one of my favorite scores for any movie um, ever. And then just from character perspective, I love everything that James Caan is doing. I love that this movie focuses more on Caan than the actual like build up to the heist. Um, it is a different movie in Michael Mann's you know repertoire. It's more character focused, kind of less concerned about all the details. But at the same time, I think if you like what you see in Heat, this has a lot to offer, right? I think Man is a guy that is obsessed with like professionalism. Like I want to see guys that know how to do their jobs. Um, and to me, that's that's like the aspect of Heat that I probably like the most. And I think that's here too, right? You do see, especially in that opening, 
these are guys that they just got it down. Like they can operate at a high level. They don't have to talk to each other. They all have a job to do. They know how to do it. They get it done. The only time they speak to each other is to just like, are we clear? Yeah, we're clear. Um, so I think if, you know, this, this to me is like a perfect marriage of what Michael Mann becomes later in his career with this like hyper fixation on a professional doing his job the right way. But this to me also has a much more, you know, granular view of who these people are and getting into the details of like what makes Khan tick, uh, what are the things that make him susceptible to being tricked. Like even though he's a professional in his job, he is still a guy that can be taken advantage of in some way. Like he's so willing to make deals with the wrong people just trying to, you know, get one step closer to his goal. So it's ultimately like, I don't know. I I just love that. It's this story of, um, a very, very good thief. That is also like his own worst enemy. He, will defeat himself at the end of this movie more than anyone else does. Um, I don't know. I just, I love this movie. I I saw it a long time ago. It's always stuck in my head. And then within the last few years, I picked this thing up, you know, on a Blu-ray and have watched it several times since then. Uh, it's a movie I revisit. I'll continue to revisit. Personally, my favorite man but probably not man's greatest movie. Thief is a five-star film. I love it. Go watch it. Been told. When was the last time you saw Collateral? That's a good question. That one's probably a little further back. Like, that might be, I don't know, you know, like five or six years now. Say two years for me. I know I watched it maybe last year. Maybe I always think of collateral as being like a more I don't know. It, it's kind of a more of a personal story. Well, but it's also more like a, I don't know. I don't want to say humorous, but like I feel like it's got more of like a light hearted kind of vibe than there's, thief. Yeah, there's a little bit more levity maybe uh, it, yeah it, like little moments it, it to breathes where it's not a little so bit. shitty yeah yeah i'd just be interested to see now that you like you said in the last few years you've really dug into to thief and you see that character work i would be interested if you went and you watched some of his more like uh his later works if you would then be kind of tuned into him and you see that character stuff kind of pop out. Because that's, I mean, that's the thing I love about Heat. Yeah, that fucking shootout is awesome, right? Like, give me all you got! Fucking shaking the table, and she got a great ass. You know, that stuff's fucking great. But when just the little character moments of, of him having to tell his wife, like, hey, you knew when we hooked up, baby, that you were going to have to share me. And him talking about his dreams, and like it, every every time I watch it, it just oozes absolute perfect character choices and decisions and and performance. So, um, I don't know. So I I don't want to argue and say like, oh, those don't or those do have it, and you're not seeing it. It's just could uh, is is thief your key? to unlocking them of, of what come in, you know? Yeah, that could be. I mean, I don't know if I've really gone back to any man's like man is not a director that I love. I love this movie, you know, but Mm -hmm. he's not a guy that I will like seek out stuff that I haven't seen or that I feel like a great need to rewatch his other movies that aren't thief. So maybe I should like now that I've developed this love for this movie, this might be like a good point to go back and kind of, you know, rewatch some stuff where I was, and it's, 
it's not like I dislike Heat. Heat is an incredible movie, yeah. you know, but um, I guess I just never connected with it the way I've, I feel like I've connected with Thief. Right on. But it, it could just be time to do a rewatch and see if I still feel that way, mm-hmm. so... Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll throw collateral on the uh, second round of five stars because it was a it was in consideration. But hey, we could always do a direction erection. Certainly could. We can do whatever the hell I we feel want. Like, I feel like Bones would be like five star, five star. <laughs> mm. Until I make us all watch the keep. Tangerine Dreams it's did do that score as well. One of the two that I'm saving. I, I think it's still hard to find. Yeah, the but it's it's one that I have alerts for if it ever pops up. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to bring it to the show because I haven't seen it. And Black Hat, I, I'm saving. Like I think, I think the key might still be like a. Like, if you want to buy it, you got to get, like, an import Blu-ray. Like, I don't know if it's been put out past, you know, VHS in America. Okay. So. It looks like it's available to rent on uh, Apple and Google. I might be wrong then. Okay. I mean, if someone's done the, yeah. you know, like, the conversion, then Black, it could be out there. Black Hat was one that I just, for some reason, whenever it came out, I don't know why I didn't get to see it. And then it very immediately that news of like, well, there's a director's cut. It's different. You know, like they made him cut a bunch of shit and there's, there's back and forth. I mean, um, the way people freak out about last of the Mohicans, it's like, I, I I couldn't tell you which cut I've seen. I'd be, I think I'd be interested to watch black hat. Cause I feel like, from the people I've talked to that have watched it, the consensus seems to be like, it's not good, but I had a fun time watching it. Mm-hmm. So, And then there's not stuff bad. like The Insider or Ali, which are great, but they're not fun to watch. Like, you're like, oh, this is fucking awesome, but it is bumming me the fuck out. <laughs> I feel like the one in the middle there is Public Enemies, which I wanted to love because it was bail and everything, but... Yeah, I remember seeing that one, but it's been... I think I saw that in theaters and have probably not watched it since. Oh, I remember Danny Duck being like, dude, just admit that digital looked bad. And I was like, no! Uh." Like, I couldn't bring myself to admit it at the time, but... I think I went with you and Danny on that one. Yeah, I stand by the decision to do it, but... And I think we've talked about it in the past, but... Come on, man. Manhunter. Yeah, yeah, man. Ferrari. I like Manhunter, but I think I like this movie better than Manhunter. I would say I like Thief more than Manhunter. So there, Kron. There's your fucking victory. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Mark we can at least all agree that it's no Ant Man. So it's no it's no Hannibal. Hey man is boring as fuck, dude. <laughs> he made a good choice. At the time, it's like, ah, oh, this is this is kind of fun, but Mm-mm. well, hell, should we get out of here? I guess, kind of end on the downer of Ant Man, folks. The dirty dudes and myself would put our heart and souls into this podcast. As you can tell, the research, the plex, the jokes, the fucking the plex. plex talks, the cold opens. It's amazing. It's beautiful content. Our, we've left our families, got divorced uh, to do this show. And we don't charge a shit. So the least you could do is if you're on Apple or Spotify, please rate and review and hit that subscribe button. Helps us bring the show to more people. And helps with world domination for five day rentals. You can catch us on Instagram. You can catch us on threads. You can follow along on Letterboxd. 
please do. Uh, there is a Discord link on all the episodes that are released every Wednesday of Five Day Rentals. So if you really want to fuck with us, join that Discord. That's where you can find us. But until then, crash and burn. Are you tr- are you mm-hmm. motioning me to do it? Yeah. Do you got a good one? Yeah. Okay. Your your eyes just like lit up like you're so excited. Okay, brain and drain. Milk button. <laughs> <laughs>